My launch day was particularly exciting for several reasons. One of which was the fact that we had been delayed for a couple of months. And so it was almost like, oh gee, are we ever going to launch? Then on launch morning, went out to the pad and what was very different was there wasn't a cast of thousands around anymore. It was very quiet, very peaceful, and just a very few people there to help us get into the space shuttle. And uh, it was one of those feelings of disbelief. Okay, is it really here? It is finally here. I am really going to go into space after all these months of training. So we got strapped in, went through the white room, got strapped into our seats, and laid on our backs for three and a half hours because we had a weather delay and a delay for a ship in a recovery area for the solid rocket motor. So we really didn't think we were going to be able to go that day. The countdown always stops at nine minutes. And then you hold and they review everything to make sure computers are correct, everything is all right for launch. And they resume the countdown. Well, we had been at nine minutes and holding for a long time. And we really didn't expect to go. Well, at nine minutes and 55 seconds, I still hear it in my ears crackling. You're cleared to resume the countdown on my mark, mark. So we launched with only 55 seconds left in our launch window that, that morning. And I'm one of those crazy people that despite my advanced middle age still exercises an hour a day, at least five days a week. So my resting pulse rate is very low. It's only about 48 beats per minute. So obviously laying on my back for three and a half hours, I had a resting pulse rate. And I could read it because I had automatic blood pressure and pulse reading devices on my hip. I was wired for this launch. And so, anyway, I happened to look on the countdown at 10, 9, 8, 7, and the main engine start at 6.8 seconds prior to launch. They're spooling up, generating a million pounds of thrust, and it starts to become very rough and loud and vibrating. Well, at zero, the solid rocket motors ignite, and they produce 3.3 million pounds of thrust each. Now you're riding 7.6 million pounds of thrust. Two minutes, you're 25 miles down range, you're 160,000 feet above the Earth, you've averaged 80,000 feet a minute rate of climb for the first two minutes and accelerating. And you're at Mach five and a half after that two minutes. To put that into perspective, it used to take me three and a half hours to fly from Salt Lake City to Washington, D.C. on Delta. In the space shuttle, it'd take approximately six minutes. After eight and a half minutes, you're inserted into orbit 150 miles above the Earth. And so suddenly you're into this zero gravity environment, the world's biggest roller coaster. And then as I looked outside for the first time and looked back at the Earth, I thought both my heart and lungs were going to stop, but I simply couldn't breathe anymore. And it didn't make any difference. I didn't care. It was such an incredible experience that if it ended right then, so be it. But if you can imagine being able to see the entire Mediterranean Sea all at one time, see Spain, Portugal, Gibraltar, North Africa, France, Italy, Greece, the Greek Isles, see Egypt where the blue and the white Nile combine and flow northward through the Alexandria Delta and the Mediterranean Sea, and the Red Sea and the Sinai Peninsula, and Israel. See the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River flowing southward into the Dead Sea, and Lebanon, the Turkish Highlands, the Bosphorus, the Black Sea, the former Soviet Union, and then all of Europe spread out before you in the edge of the earth. And you have 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets every single day. As you go into a sunset period, the earth becomes very black below you. Space is always black behind you, and the sun refracting through the Earth's atmosphere produces the most magnificent rainbow you've ever seen all the way around the edge of the Earth. So if you can imagine this beautiful white spacecraft in the blackness of space, magnificent rainbow all the way around the edge of the Earth, and John Glenn's fireflies traveling with you at 25 times the speed of sound. When John flew, they were worried. Nothing to worry about. We vent excess water vapor overboard from our fuel cells. In the minus 250 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, they instantly freeze into solid ice crystals and also refract the sun's light and sparkle with all the colors of the rainbow. 
I think that even when I have Alzheimer's and can't remember who my wife is, I will remember that view of the earth, the incredible, indescribable beauty of our planet, the rainbows, the spacecraft, and be able to look out into uh, to space. Uh, I dream about it two or three times a week, still, after 15 years. And so I think most everybody that has flown, all the astronauts, and there's only about 400 total in the world that have flown, we all agree you simply cannot describe to people how beautiful our planet is.